Hello, my lovely flowers. It's me, Mia, with Exquisite Floral Design and Events. And today I am here to explain to you how to become an event florist. But first, let me tell you the difference between an event florist and a retail florist. For myself, I am currently working as an event florist and what I do is I do flowers for weddings, birthdays, quinceañeras, baby showers, anything, any type of event that has flowers, that's where you find me. And most of my business is with weddings. Now a retail florist, it would be someone who does mostly everyday flowers for say your condolences, condolence flowers, roses, something to your friend. That would be more of a retail floral or someone and you kind of see that a lot. Your competition would be someone like the a grocery store or something like that. So that's the difference between a uh, event florist and a retail florist. I'm, today I'm going to explain to you more about an event florist and how to become an event florist. Okay, so the first thing that you need to do in order to become an event florist is learn the principle of floristry. So for me, I started many moons ago and I just went to my local college or my local junior college and I learned the principles of floristry. And some examples are that triangle, um, you know, keeping everything to where it doesn't look top heavy, um, what vases to use, how to use my scissors or how to use my knife, um, just general things like that, how to soak the floor, the floor arrangements all that good stuff. Now, I'm a hands-on person. I have to learn by uh, seeing someone else do it and do it myself, but there's tons of videos online that can teach you all that great stuff. Look in the link below or up here, or up here, I will tag in some videos on how to hydrate your flowers, how to cut your flowers, and all that good stuff, if you like. So once you learn the fundamentals of floristry, Go and freelance. That's my second uh, suggestion. Go and freelance. So what you're going to do is you're going to look in your local newspaper, not newspaper, on your local, well, I'm dating myself. You're going to look on your local websites, on hiring websites, um, and you're going to find a freelance job. A lot of times, uh, large businesses will post jobs and they're looking for freelance and they will show you some great or you'll get some great information on how a whole event works um how how crazy everything is how they package stuff how they create stuff how they you just learn a lot in such a long time it'll take you about three or four events and you learned it all so that is an excellent way on how now that you learn the principles <laughs> Second, you learn, you freelanced and you, you learn the ins and outs of how everything works. The third thing to do is do flowers for events for your friends and family. That is like the best thing ever. You know, you go out, you let all your friends and family know that you are now an event florist. You've done this, showing some of your examples of work that, you, that you've done in school or just playing around and um, say, you know, your next baby shower, your next birthday party, if you feel confident enough, next wedding. Um, I will love to do your flowers. I'll do it at cost. So that's basically what you'll do. And so you learn, you will get everything together for them. Um, you could always get flowers for such things like that, like at Sam's Club, Costco, you're able to order bulk. There are some places online that you can order bulk flowers also without having a resale license or anything like that. So that is a good way to get your feet wet. Now that you have done for your friends and family, the next thing that you would do what would be is um, go to do a bridal show. So, um, you know, 
draw out, go online, you know, Pinterest gives you some great ideas on how you could set up your booth at a bridal show. Do something really small, you know, get your feet wet, get to talking to brides and, um, and different people and let them, you know, set up a booth of maybe like, um, I've done a booth where I did a, um, ceremony i done my booth where i did reception flowers you're just showing your work and you're getting people who've seen with you what you've done and you've also you know got pictures for your portfolio and all that great stuff now that you have finished with the bridal show your next thing that you could you will do is sign up for wedding wire the knot or zola those are some great ways to receive leads on different um different brides who are getting married and also you get um get a lot of leads you get to talk to a lot of people and don't get me wrong you will get a lot of people who are price shopping but you will be able to you know start your business off and get you know a, a lot um i think my first year with them i want to say i did invest a lot but i want to say um i had if I took every wedding, I probably would have had a wedding every weekend. Um, so it, 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 but I did pay for a really high, um, I think I paid about $500 a month. So you don't have to do that. You can get like a lower one because you know, you don't, you may not want that volume of work. So that is another thing that you could do. After you've, you know, you got the bridal show together, you got the, um, you sign up for wedding wire. Now it's time for you to invest in or figure out how you're going to calculate these proposals. So some ways, some things that I use is HoneyBook, which I communicate. It's a communicating platform. And you also get to meet a lot of different professionals that are, are also tied into HoneyBook. And also I use Curate, Curate to also create my proposals and to calculate my costs. But before I had any of this good stuff, I used to use Excel. And I to calculate my proposals, and so I know a rose would be about a dollar wholesale cost, a little bit more for you guys. Um, and um, usually markup in the industry is 3.5 to 4. Um, so it, I know that I would charge for one rose and a bouquet would be $3.50 to $4.00. And then I will also add on my labor costs. So for me to make a bouquet, it will cost $50. But for me or my assistants to make a bouquet, it would be like $18.50, $18. which would I pay them. So, you know, per hour. And for me, it only takes about, probably about 30 minutes to make a beautiful bouquet. Now, if I'm making something really elaborate, it may take about an hour, but about 30 minutes. So, you know, you calculate that cost, you get all your total. So all I would do was on my Excel spreadsheet, I would, um, you know what, I'm going to show you. Okay, you guys, so this is basically how I would use, if you don't want to invest in some a type of floral um, software, this is what I use in order to compute my flower cost. And so basically I would just, you know, figure out the cost of it, everything, of all the flowers that I'm going to be using. Most of the time you can go to your local, um, your local wholesaler and they'll give you that information. So we know that, um, a bridal bouquet um, have a certain number of flowers and everything. So a bridal bouquet usually has about 25 to 30 flowers. So we can see that her bouquet would be uh, $235. I would add in labor costs. So her bouquet would be around 250. Her bridesmaid's bouquet, which is be like a po posy, which is kind of small. So it has uh, about 10 flowers in it. I would use odd number, I don't like evens. But her, they would be about $32 for the cost of everything, add in the labor costs, so you'd be about $45. Boutonnieres, it only costs you about $2 to make, but it takes time. So that my boutonnieres usually run about $15 to $25. For her arch, um, this is not calculated right, <laughs> but you would just basically calculate, um, you would take that information and calculate that right. I did for like the aisle decorations and um for so first uh oh so on and so on so that's basically how 
we would do the um, calculations and then this would tell me the total of everything I needed for when I went to place my order. So I know I needed about seven white garden roses. They sell, they, co they come in a group of 10. I know that I needed uh, 47 um, roses, but they come in a group of 25. So I need two bunches. The blue hydrangeas, you sometimes can get them in bunches of five or single sold. Um, the thistle, it comes in 10. So I know I need two bunches. Stock come in 10. I know I need four. The um, Dusty Miller, I you know, since it's 5.50 a bunch, I went ahead and um, divided. I know I need about one third bunch in her bouquet. So I'm gonna need about two bunches and so forth. So that's how you come up, come with the, um, with the pricing of your, then I will go to Canva and I will just create a beautiful proposal, put all the information in and send it over to your bride. Then you go into Canva and Canva, let me see, I think that would work with you or you could just create it from scratch and just take the information and you're just gonna like put the bridal bouquet, put all the stuff you tell about yourself, put everything that you're gonna list and the cost and that's basically it. So those are some of the things you can do to become an event florist. You got the skills, you know how it works, you know where to get your customers from, and you know how to send over those proposals. Good luck, and I hope your business grows to infinity and beyond. Anyway, my name is Neil with Exquisite Flow Design and Events, and I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I will have a series on how to become an event florist, giving you guys some more tips on how to run your business. And thank you for watching. Bye.